Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I'm going to attempt to make sulfuric acid using the chamber process. Now my chamber today is this uh, glass cylinder. Historically this would have been a lead-lined wooden box the size of a cathedral, but I'm just doing a small-scale test today. I'll probably scale up at some point. But uh, the reaction that's going on here overall looks like this. Water is reacting with sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas to form sulfuric acid. Uh, the sulfur dioxide, one of the gases that I'll be starting with, dissolves into the water making sulfurous acid, which uh, breaks down, as acids do, in solution. This uh, sulfurous acid must be oxidized in order to form sulfuric acid, though, and regular atmospheric oxygen just won't do it on its own. So you need a catalyst. And for this catalyst, I'm going to be using nitric acid. So the nitrate reacts with the uh, SO3, 2 minus, in solution, uh, forming uh, sulfate and nitrogen monoxide gas. So nitrogen monoxide goes into the chamber and reacts with the oxygen gas, forming nitrogen dioxide, which further reacts with water, forming nitric acid. It's good that I'm able to use this as a catalyst because I don't have very much nitric acid left. Of course, I can make more, but it's a lot of work. So, let's uh, pour out, looks like about three to five milliliters, so not very much. And to this, let's add uh, about 100 milliliters of water. So let's just uh, pour this into the chamber, just like that. Now I do have this whole thing on a hot plate. I'm not going to be heating it. I'm just using this so that I can stir this up and agitate the water so it'll react faster. Now the chamber is full of air currently. That is not a huge problem, but it is a little bit of annoying because the uh, nitrogen is taking up a lot of volume. In fact, you know, there's only about 20% oxygen in there right now. The nitrogen isn't going to do anything for this reaction. So, make things a little bit easier on me. I'm going to suck out all of that air so that I can replace it with pure oxygen. The air pressure right now is just over 25 inches of mercury. The gauge here is reading almost 25. I would expect it to not be a full vacuum because you know, there's a bunch of water and stuff in there. It's time to replace the atmosphere with my own mixture. And for that I'm going to use a, a pair of gas generators here. This one will be making sulfur dioxide and this one will be making oxygen gas. I've got uh, hydrogen peroxide here and a catalyst, which will break it down into oxygen. And over here, I've got some, uh, ironically, sulfuric acid, which I'm going to be adding to sodium metabisulfate. And uh, once the gas is formed, it'll go up here through a filter, which will take out the water vapor, as well as any particulates. And that uh, gas, now cleaned, is going to go up this glass tube and into the chamber. So in our overall reaction we have uh, two sulfur dioxide for one oxygen. Now these are by moles and a mole of gas is the same volume as another mole of gas so we're gonna have two to one by volume and uh, volume does correspond to pressure. So I'm gonna take the pressure which is currently at negative 600 torr, 24 inches of mercury, to I'm going to add 130 of oxygen and then about 260 of sulfur dioxide, so I end up with a negative 200 torr. All right, time to add in the gases. I'm going to start with oxygen, so let's put in a little bit of the peroxide onto the catalyst. This will probably be a very vigorous reaction considering that this is happening under reduced pressure. And is that going to boil over? It is, isn't it? Uh, well, that's what the filter's for. Yep, the filter's doing its job. It's keeping that manganese dioxide out of there. Okay, that's about the right amount of oxygen in. 
I ended up uh, actually taking the uh, separating funnel out of there so that I could relieve the pressure. The reaction was continuing a little bit more than I would like. So now we're going to put in the uh, sulfur dioxide. Okay, looks like it's working. Looks like I've overshot my target pressure a little bit. And the reaction's continuing, but that's all right. A little bit excess on the SO2. Let's turn on the stir. Let's get this uh, water mixed up and start making the acid. All right, six o'clock. Let this run for a couple of hours, maybe. See how it does. Since I had an excess of sulfur dioxide, I decided to put some more oxygen in and bring it up to normal atmospheric pressure. Uh, of course, I overshot on the amount of peroxide, so I've had to release it. But fortunately, I was able to shut it off right here and just let the air, the oxygen, go off into the air. Assuming there's no leaks, this should actually pull a vacuum as the gases react and form the sulfuric acid. Yeah, it is pulling a vacuum, so it's working. So there we are, it's been just after one hour. If we uh, take a piece of white paper here, you can see that the chamber is slightly brown, especially up near the top there. Uh, another update is I have turned on this hot plate, you know, just very low. It is near freezing in here, so I figure a little bit of heating probably wouldn't hurt. Uh, as long as I can hold my hand on there, it's probably not too hot. I just don't want to break the glass. Uh, this pressure gauge seems to be stuck at about one inch of mercury. You see here? Yeah. My guess is that uh, either the reaction's not working, or air is leaking in at about the same rate as the other gases are consumed. If that's the case, it is going to be kind of hard to tell when this is done. So I'm just going to give it another hour, and then whatever it's got then, I think is what we've made. So I actually let it go to about 8.30, and let's shut it down. Pop this off, and open it up. I smell a little bit of sulfur dioxide, so I didn't use up all of it. But it's weak enough that I think it must have used most of it. I'm going to shake this around, get all that off the walls of the chamber. Okay, let's set up and let's uh, boil out the water and concentrate the acid. Okay, let's pour our crude acid into the distillation apparatus. Yeah, let's throw the stir bar in there with it, that's fine. There we go, distillation has started. The water's coming over, and the nitric acid should be coming along with it. Alright, I think most of the water has been boiled out. Pull it off there. Let's see what we got. Oh, I think it's stuck. When that happens. There we go. Okay, so now let's uh, 
pour this out into a little beaker here and see how much concentrated acid we got. Oh, look at those fumes. i to turn on my fan. Let's see how much we got here. It's like right around 20 milliliters. <laughs> Not very much. Uh, certainly less than the amount that I used to produce the sulfur dioxide, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that I was able to take the sulfur dioxide and convert it into the acid. Uh, I could produce the sulfur dioxide by burning sulfur, for instance. And yeah, that does look like more than I would expect just from reacting the sulfur dioxide with nitric acid alone, so it definitely had a catalytic effect. I'm sure if I had a bigger chamber I could have made a lot more. So I'd say this is a success. Let's uh, pour this into some sugar and see if it'll dehydrate it. I would say that's uh, dehydration. <laughs> neat. Didn't really... Oh, it's gonna do it. <laughs> Alright, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. It's actually the best smelling thing I've made all day. <laughs>